I'm calling to order this uh, meeting of the uh, Committee of the Whole. I'm Phil Mendelson, Chairman of the Council and Chairman of the Committee of the Whole. Today is Thursday, May 9, 2013. The time is 4.11 in the afternoon. We are in the Council Chambers of the Johnny Wilson Building. That's room 500. Uh, I want to note that um, the uh, Committee on Human Services had not completed its markup. Actually, I think they hadn't begun their markup, but we were scheduled for 4 o'clock. Uh, it's up to Mr. Graham if he wants the members of that committee to remain after this markup to um, do their markup if he has the dollars that he needs, uh, excuse me, the financial figures and information from the Chief Financial Officer that he needs. Uh, but 4 o'clock is the time scheduled for the Committee of the Whole. The clerk will determine whether there's a quorum. Chairman Mendelson. Present. Councilmember Alexander. Here. Councilmember Barry. Here. Councilmember Bonds. Here. Councilmember Bowser. Here. Councilmember Catania. Councilmember Catania. Here. Councilmember Che. Here. Councilmember Evans. Councilmember Evans. Councilmember Graham. Here. Councilmember Grosso. Here. Councilmember McDuffie. Here. Councilmember Orange. Councilmember Orange, Councilmember Wells. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, we have one item uh, on the agenda. Like all of the committees, uh, we are marking up uh, our recommendations. Uh, this is a report and recommendations of the committee as a whole on the fiscal year 2014 budget and corresponding budget support act. Uh, the report before us presents the Committee of the Whole's recommendations regarding funding allocations for the fiscal year 2014 for the agencies under the committee's purview. And I make that distinction from the Committee of the Whole markup on May 22nd, which will be on the um, budget overall. The agencies under the purview of the Committee of the Whole include the Council itself, the D.C. Auditor, the University of the District of Columbia, including the Community College the Office of Zoning, the Board of Zoning Adjustment, the Zoning Commission, and the Office of Planning, the Office of Contracting and Procurement, as well as Contract Appe Appeals Board, the Retirement Fund for Police, Firefighters, and Teachers. The report before us not only makes recommendations regarding funding allocations for fiscal year 2014, but it comments on policy priorities for many of these agencies and makes a number of suggested legislative changes related to the budget. I should note that uh, distributed to members on the dais today uh, are minor technical changes to the agency summary chart which has been distributed. This reflects the correct numbers as found later in the report. A summary of the recommendations can be found at the beginning of the report on Roman numeral pages 9 through 22. The report, together with the reports adopted this week by the Council's other committees, will be discussed by members at working meetings scheduled for next Tuesday and Wednesday. Changes, disagreements, and unmet needs will be discussed at those working meetings, and out of those discussions, as well as these reports, a proposal will be put before the Committee of the Whole on May 22nd. As members know, that same day after the Committee of the Whole meeting, the Council will meet to vote on the Budget Request Act, which receives a single reading, and the Budget Support Act, which will be the first of two readings. Generally speaking, the report before you makes few changes to the proposed budget as submitted to the Council. $150,000 is added to the Council's budget, funding that's transferred from the Finance and Revenue Committee to implement transit benefits for Council employees who are without Council-provided parking spaces. The revised budget table reflects a decrease of $12 million in federal funds from UDC's budget. This reduction is in addition to the $19.5 million reduction in federal funds reflected in the FY 2014 budget proposed by the Mayor. UDC's agency fiscal officer asked for the $12 million reduction in order to accurately reflect UDC's budget. As the $12 million comes from Pell Grants and was being double counted, once as a federal grant to the university and once as revenue from student tuition. It's a little hard to believe that there was this double counting. Therefore, the committee recommends the reduction of $12 million from UDC's federal funds in order to truly reflect, or rather accurately reflect, UDC's federal funds budget, which should be $19 million, $19.5 million, instead of the $31.5 million reflected in the budget books. $82,000 is added to the Office of Labor Relations and Collective Bargaining to restore an attorney advisor position that is currently accounted for in the fiscal year 2013 budget, but was accidentally eliminated in the fiscal year 2014 budget. 
There are no changes to the number of FTEs for the agencies under the Committee of the Whole, other than the restoration of the one FTE to the Office of Labor Relations and Collective Bargaining. The report does make a number of recommendations regarding a number of agencies. Among the most noteworthy, this is not an exclu uh, a, um, a complete list, I'll uh, recommend that the OLRCB, that's the Office of Labor Relations and Collective Bargaining, give greater weight to financial cost and the cost to overall labor relations when deciding how to proceed with a case. The report recommends that the Office of Contracting and Procurement implement a robust training program which includes comprehensive tiered certification to reflect level of experience and training specialty. The report recommends that the Contract Appeals Board develop metrics to track aging cases. The report recommends that the Office of Planning ensure adequate funding and spending for historic homeowner the Historic Homeowner Grant Program in line with what is statutorily authorized. The report recommends amending the Budget Support Act to allow the University of the District of Columbia to retain fees collected by the Central Collection Unit on its behalf. The report recommends that UDC complete its right-sizing plan by August 31st and begin implementation by October 31st of this year and that the plan include a comprehensive enrollment plan to increase the number of students at both the flagship and community college. The report um, also uh, recommends that the university provide the community college with the independence it needs so that it can fulfill its ability to be recognized as separately accreditable. The report makes no recommendations to the general provisions sections of the budget of sections of the Budget Request Act. With regard to the Budget Support Act, the report recommends technical changes to improve Title I, Subtitle B, which is the One City Fund. The committee revises the language proposed by the mayor in Title III, Subtitle C, which is entitled Automated Traffic Enforcement Enhancement, to restore the transfer of excess ATE revenue to the E911 fund. In restoring the transfer, the committee raises by about 70% the threshold that is, raises it before transfer of ATE revenue may be made into the E911 account. The committee recommends adopting the subject to appropriations repealers that were proposed by the mayor and adding several to his recommendation. More specifically, the mayor's proposed budget includes funding for five tax abatements and one other bill. The report adds two bills identified by general counsel for which the subject to appropriations language can be repealed. The report adds to the Budget Support Act the Tax Revision Commission Report Extension and Procurement Streamlining Amendment, which the Council has adopted already on an emergency and temporary basis. The Commission's report will be due by December 31, 2013. The report adds to the Budget Support Act the University of the District of Columbia Student Debt Recovery Amendment Act, which would align collection of the university's delinquent debts with the university's current practices. Instead of transferring the debt to the government's collection unit within 60 days, it would be transferred within one year of the end of the semester in which the debts were incurred. Additionally, UDC will retain the collected funds in its accounts rather than having the funds deposited in the general fund. Finally, the report proposes a new subtitle in the Budget Support Act which would add four non-voting members with expertise in community colleges to the UDC Board of Trustees and require UDC to develop a timeline for making the community college separately accreditable. I move the report with leave for staff to make technical conforming and editorial changes. Discussion. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Grasso. First, I want to thank you and uh, commend the work of the Committee of the Whole on this. Uh, your staff and everybody has done an outstanding job with this report. I'm extremely impressed. Um, I have a couple of things I want to point out and, and highlight uh, that are in the report, one of which you just ended um, with, and that is the, uh, the work on the community college. It's something that you know I've focused on uh, during my short tenure here on the council and something that I'm really um, uh, impressed with how we've been able to move forward with this report uh, to highlight some needed um, progress in how they move forward for their accreditation. Um, the language you've included in the markup will require DC to produce a timeline for accreditation of the community college. Uh, the question of independence uh, of the community college is one that can be answered as we move forward. Um, and my addition to this bill or the, the, the bill, the language that we worked on uh, merely creates a reporting requirement and a specific timeline for those reports. Uh, we also add four new non-voting members to the Board of Trustees um, that can work. Uh, 
uh, on the community college issue, which I think is an important addition um, in order to have some more focus at the Board of Trustees for this effort. And so I appreciate your willingness to work with me on that. Um, ultimately, to be effective and efficient, I believe that the University of the District of Columbia must re-engage its core mission, um, prepare students for their education, for their future in the workforce, um, and ultimately the community college has a similar task at hand. So um, these, this language that we put in, I think, makes a, a big stride towards that. I also want to commend the committee as a whole for um, the components you've put in around training for contracting and procurement. Um, that is something that I think is de desperately needed, uh, and I'm pleased that it's included um, in this particular report. Um, with that, I'll, I support the report, and I look forward to voting for it uh, as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Further discussion on the uh, report? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Orange. Mr. Orange. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I have an amendment, and this is a uh, amendment would be uh, to request that the Committee of the Whole accept the $100,000 from the Committee on Business Consumer Regulatory Affairs for the uh, Secretary to the Council for D.C. Emancipation Day events. Uh, yesterday, the Committee on Business Consumer Regulatory Affairs voted unanimously for uh, a package of increases, in particular to fund our main streets, our clean teams, uh, to provide some funding for boxing, motion pictures, and uh, Emancipation Day activities. Uh, the Emancipation budget was $250,000 for this year. Uh, during Mayor Williams' tenure, the budget was $400,000. And clearly this year uh, it was two fifty, dollars and we had to make significant cuts in the operation of the activities. Uh, generally, we would go after 1,000 seniors. We had to cut that budget back for only 500 seniors. Seating was cut from 2,000 for the bleachers back to 1,000. We were unable to do any type of marketing for uh, uh, marketing through the Washington Informer or the Afro uh, newspapers. And so this $100,000 that the committee has found and voted unanimously would go, uh, would take a, a will provide us with the opportunity to do some of the things we were unable to do the, uh, this year. Uh, Mr. Orange, you and I spoke about this briefly earlier, and, and I said we would talk about this. So I'm a little surprised at the amendment. Um, I believe that the council members ought to discuss this at the uh, when we meet next week in the working session. There's $250,000 already for Emancipation Day, so this would increase it to $350,000. Um, are you okay if you hold off on this and we discuss it next week so that the members can look at a budget? I think we should look at how the money was spent this year, the last couple of years, um, actually have a kind of an outline of a budget before us. And if the members in the working meeting want to increase it to 350, then that would be my recommendation to the uh, full council on May 22nd. Well, would you uh, be willing to withdraw this and have that discussion? No, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to, to vote on it now as the chairman of the committee and uh, the person that's been working on this for the last 10 years. Uh, you know, we think now is the time. and. The fact that through my committee and working with five people on my committee, as well as working with two other committees, Committee on Transportation, as well as Government Operations, and receiving funding from their uh, committees that was came into my committee to create the packages of increases, I don't understand why only uh, D.C. Emancipation is being singled out when, in fact, uh, this is what the committee reported out. It's not raising taxes. I worked with the budget staff. They found vacancies under committees that are under my jurisdiction. And this is a very small amount. And uh, we just have gone through the emancipation. And I can say nothing's going to change. I'm telling you now that we had significant problems. And this additional $100,000 would help it out. And uh, everyone here knows that I've been working on this for years. And we've when we finally got to $400,000 only to have a uh, a mayor not spend the money according to the law. So I don't, I, uh, don't understand why you would not accept this, uh, especially since it's coming through the committee and we have oversight over this uh, function. 
All right, well, then let, let's do this. First of all, I, I, it's not singled out, but let, let's do this. I, I will accept it uh, with the understanding that we will discuss this in, uh, more uh, thoroughly next week as part of our uh, work, work meetings. So if there's no objection, it's accepted. Uh, further discussion, uh, Mr. Berry? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Let me uh, thank you for your, your work here. In terms of the CPO, we know there's a broken system. Ms. Shea did all she could do uh, to make it relevant. Mr. Chairman, a point of order. We haven't finished the discussion that I put on the table, and I have an oh. amendment on the table. What? Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear it. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Barry. Mr. <Yes>, Chairman, <laughs> as, as, as it come to your attention, not only is it broken, but that Mr. Staten is doing it incredible job under very difficult circumstances. He lost 18 positions uh, two weeks after he got there. Did that come to your attention? That brought out by anybody? I'm, I, who what I'm asking is in the CPO, part of the problem is just rules and regulations. The big problem is that it is short-staffed. And I was asking, has this situation been called to your attention? You know what I'm saying? You're talking about the Office of Contracting and Procurement? Yeah. Uh, CPO. Yeah, I, I would have to say yes. So uh, is that generally true that it's short-staffed? The budget that's before us increases the number of FTEs. How many? I believe it increases it to 103 or 106. That's why I asked the question that way. Um. If you turn to page um, 16 of the report, there's a table. And the table shows the uh, actual budget and the mayor's proposal uh, beginning with 2008. The number of FTEs in the current year, budget is 85. The budget before us that the committee uh, accepts is 103 positions. That's an increase of 15, 18 positions. But you know why I asked the question that way? Because I haven't read the report. i um, busy trying to get some money for teams and other people. Sure. Thank you for that. Now, in terms of the uh, UDC Community College and UDC itself, it's not your fault or mine or anybody else. But the university has fallen on hard times. It used to be a great, glorious university, starting to control the work where it made. The university sent his radio station and also cut their budget tremendously. And I'm just saying that obviously the university community, they got to do more, a lot of more. And so I'm not going to put any pressure on anybody to increase the budget. See, I believe in self help. Those who need this help ought to mobilize themselves and come down here like other people do and advocate for it. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me just say a little bit more with regard to contracting, uh, Mr. Berry. Um, one of the recommendations we make, and I mentioned this in, in my opening, is that um, the Office of Contracting and Procurement has to do much more with regard to training. Um, mm -hmm. You know, training, as you know, is often the first to be cut when an agency uh, needs to find dollars. They need to restore training, but more than that, they, they need to implement something like a certification system, which the federal government has, a lot of states have, so that a procurement specialist trains to a certain level and gets a certificate that he or she is trained to that level. They get additional training, they get a certificate showing that they have that additional training. OCP doesn't have that right now. Uh, it's a strong emphasis in this report that if we are to improve procurement, then um, that agency has got to improve training and have a measure of that which comes in a certification program. Uh, the report also says that uh, one way to measure whether Office of Contracting and Procurement uh, has tur finally turned the corner, which they have not yet, will be the day when agencies are coming to us saying we want to be under OCP for procurement as opposed to what we currently see, which is agencies coming to us saying we want to be exempted from OCP. Chairman, let me thank you for that, because there are people over there making decisions about multi-million dollars, and not as thorough, they intend to be thorough, but just not, and so I really appreciate that. 
move in terms of training uh, sent to the federal government. So uh, it's a good thing. One final point on the community college, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to advocate during this next year that the, that the community college be free tuition. I'm going to work hard on that. So I just want to let everybody know we need to do more for this community college. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Further discussion on the uh, report? Uh, we have before us the report, and the motion is with leave for staff to make technical conforming editorial changes. All those, and there's the one amendment. All those in favor of the report as amended, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. The time is 4.32 in the afternoon, and this meeting is adjourned.